Hello and welcome to Tool of the Day. I'm Mr. D and today we're going to tackle one of the most versatile tools in the workshop, the Mighty Framing Square. Like other squares, the Framing Square's main function is to create 90 degree angles, but there's a lot more to this tool than meets the eye. The thicker two foot end is called the blade and the thinner 16 inch end is called the tongue. The large size of the framing square makes it easy to accurately check corners for square on large builds like construction framing, furniture, or cabinets. Because they're so big, they aren't very practical to carry around the construction site or fit into a tool belt or a toolbox. You can also find smaller varieties like this carpenter's square which is a little bit more portable, but it lacks some of the features that the traditional framing square has. Framing squares might be made from steel or from aluminum. Aluminum squares are a little bit lighter weight, but steel ones will hold up a little bit better when they're used as a straight edge for cutting with a utility knife, and the aluminum ones will tend to get nicked and dinged a little bit more than the steel will. The steel one also tends to get a lot hotter in the sunshine. Whatever material you choose, I strongly recommend getting one that has the high contrast markings on it like this one. Some of the metal ones just have markings stamped into them, and in poor lighting they can be very difficult to read. But this one with the painted markings and the black surface make it real easy to read, even in poor lighting. What makes the framing square so mighty is all the many things you can do with it besides just marking straight lines and 90 degree corners. It can also help you figure out how to mark and lay out more complicated pieces for construction framing. To see more about this, check out my video on laying out common rafters with a framing square, or my video on laying out a stair stringer using a framing square. Besides the normal inch and fraction markings on the edges of the framing square, it has lots of other markings that are there to make the life of builders and carpenters much easier. This chart on the blade of the framing square is called a rafter table, and is used to help builders figure out the lengths of complex pieces for roof framing. For example, a set of construction plans indicates the pitch or steepness of a roof as a ratio of rise over run, such as a 312 or a 512 pitch. The first number is the units of rise per every 12 units of run. Normally, building plans will include measurements for how wide of a distance the roof must span, but they probably don't tell us how long to cut each of the angled rafters that makes up the sloped part of the roof. So knowing the pitch of the roof and how far the roof must span, we can use the rafter table to figure out the length of the rafter per foot of run. So on the first line of my rafter table, if I have a 512 roof pitch, I can find the five and see how long the sloped edge of the rafter would be for each foot of run, 13 inches. So basically on a right triangle where one leg measures 12 inches and the other leg measures five inches, the hypotenuse will measure 13 inches. If I know my rafter will need to span six feet of run, I can multiply this number by six to find out how long to cut the rafter. Pretty cool, huh? The other lines of the rafter table help builders figure out similar information, such as the length of a hip or valley rafter, which run at a different slope than that of the rest of the roof, or the difference in length of hip and valley jack rafters. The bottom two lines help the builder to set the framing square to the right angle to make the side cuts on the hip and valley or jack rafters. Another helpful little table on the framing square is called the brace table, which tells you how long you would need to cut a board if you wanted to make a 45 degree brace to support pieces of different lengths. Basically, you find the length of the two short sides of the triangle you want to make and the big number next to it is the length of the hypotenuse. So to support a triangle with 30 inch legs, you would need to cut a brace 42.43 inches long. This table has a couple of interesting uses. One is to help the user calculate the board footage of a board. Board feet is a unit of measurement that's sometimes used to market and sell certain types of wood. It's a measure of volume, so depending on how thick, how wide, and how long the board is, that will affect its board footage and how much the board costs. To see how this is done, check out the video right here. This table can also be used to help with some basic math problems. The lines on this table represent 8, 9, 10, 11, 13, 14, and 15. Don't ask me where 12 is. 
But when you look at a number of inches on the blade of the square, numbers below tell you how many feet and inches you get when you multiply that amount of inches by the number of the table line. So 2 inches times 8 gives us 16 inches, or 1 foot 4 inches. 4 inches times 10 gives us 40 inches, or 3 feet 4 inches. So this might help you avoid busting out your pencil or calculator to do some quick multiplication with inches. One more table I want to show you is the octagon table, which can help you create accurate octagons for planning tricky things like gazebos or the octagonal towers on Victorian style architecture. To see how the octagon table works, check out this video. Be careful about the measuring scales found on the edges of the framing square. While they look like the normal inches and fractions that we find on our tape measure, some of them aren't. These edges are broken down into sixteenths and eighths, like we're used to seeing. But this scale is broken down into twelfths, which is useful if you're reading a drawing at one foot to one inch scale. So each inch represents a foot, and each small increment represents an inch. And this scale is divided into tenths, which might be useful if you're dealing with measurements in decimal form. Career builders have an endless list of tricks for turning the framing square into the perfect measurement and layout tool for any tricky situation. It's a great tool to have, but if you're going to pick one up, I strongly recommend you pick one up that has all the special fancy features that I just showed you today. Because even if you don't think you have a use form right now, who knows, in a few years you might. I'm Mr. D and thanks for watching Tool of the Day.